After elections in Zimbabwe last month, Gifts Aziba was sworn in as an opposition MP but was taken into police detention less than a week later on many allegations, including instigating violence at a football game and defacing opponent posters in Bulawayo. Saziba, a member of the Citizens Coalition for Change CCC, has been arguing his innocence in court as other lawmakers argue in Parliament. President Emerson Umingagwa was re-elected on August 23 in a vote that the CCC called a gigantic fraud. And Saziba is just one of several opposition politicians and activists who have been detained and accused of various crimes since then. Some have suffered worse outcomes. According to rights organizations, Wambare Shenhend, a recently elected local councillor from a Harare neighborhood, was allegedly kidnapped, tortured, and dumped naked close to a river earlier this month. According to his attorneys, Nhend and an unnamed relative were both given unknown injections during the brief disappearance. Since the attack, Nhend is rumored to have left the nation. Doug Coltit, Nhend's attorney, was also jailed before being released on bond. A troubling sign of the status of the rule of law in Zimbabwe and the way that this regime is going in the five years ahead, Coltit said of the two occurrences. After being accused of attempted murder and malicious property damage, opposition MP Maureen Katamonga spent a night in a police cell before being exonerated after the prosecution failed to provide evidence in court. Moreover, Kudzai Kadzam, a deputy mayor in Harare and lawmaker for the CCC, was detained after being accused of attacking a ZANU-PF candidate. She was released on bond after the contested election last month. The CCC claims that the cases were initiated against it to intimidate it. Those who voted for certain candidates in the previous election are being targeted, including supporters and average citizens. All dissenting voices are being targeted by the authorities, Saziba told The Guardian. That is unequivocal proof that the dictatorship lost the election. They did not succeed. So now they are turning against their own people. Rights organizations have also criticized the raid. The acting executive director of the Zimbabwe Human Rights NGO Forum, a confederation of civil society organizations. Wilbert Mandind stated, We are concerned about the crackdown that we continue to observe in the aftermath of the elections. Although we do not support all criminal activity, we are still astonished by some of these arrests. We think the government is determined to make life difficult for the opposition. A 2020 arrest warrant for Promise Mpananzi, a CCC spokesperson. 4. Defaulting court procedures. Reappeared, leading him to go into self-imposed exile. He said that the matter, which involved an alleged provocation of public violence, had been settled. In an effort to regain its two-thirds parliamentary majority, he charged ZANU-PF with planning the imprisonment of opposition lawmakers. He declared that the crackdown following the election was obvious evidence of wrath, vindictiveness, and resentment. It is also an ongoing endeavor to gain back their parliamentary majority by any means necessary. Kwanonzi asserted that one of the reasons ZANU-PF wanted a two-thirds majority was so that Mningagwa could amend the constitution to enable him to run for a third term. Since either of the two major parties won a two-thirds majority in the election held last month, no significant changes to the constitution, including changing the presidential term limits, can be enacted. Opponents have long charged ZANU-PF, which has been in power since independence in 1980, with manipulating the legal system to target and stifle dissent by silencing opposition leaders. The CCC was not singled out by authorities, According to a police spokesperson, Paul Nyathi, who claimed they were just following procedures when they investigated reports of malfeasance. The public will accuse us of doing our jobs while we are asleep if we don't make suspects under arrest after incidents have been recorded. Hence, we are performing our duties as police, he said last week to agents France Presa. According to official statistics, Mningagwa, 81, received 52.6% of the vote compared to Nelson Chamisa, 45, the leader of the CCC, 
who received 44%. Chamisa contends that the election was rigged and has demanded a new vote in addition to appealing to the Southern African Development Community SADC for help. The election. According to international observers, including those from the SADC, a regional organization that typically supports elections in member nations, fell short of democratic criteria. During his inauguration speech, Umingagwa pledged to uphold the law. Umingagwa declared that, democracy, good administration, the rule of law, and the politics of tolerance would be entrenched under my leadership and the new ZANU-PF government. In accordance with the spirit and text of our precious national constitution and laws.